Your Humanities Half Hour is brought to you by the Northern Marianas Humanities Council. Welcome to Your Humanities Half Hour. I'm Catherine Perry, and our guest today is a seventh degree black belt in various forms of karate, Sensei Denny Banyes. Denny, well, Sensei. Sensei, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Welcome to the show. My pleasure. You've been uh, living here mm. in the Marianas since 1991, and um, I wanted to give you the opportunity today to kind of share about karate and specifically the style that you're kind of emphasizing, Shin Kyoku Shinkai. But maybe you could start us off with helping us understand, number one, what is karate as a martial arts and what is the philosophy of it? Okay, uh, when you're asking me about what is karate, karate is uh, a form of... uh, uh, depends on their self of using their hand. Ka- kara, te. kara is an empty, te is a hand. And we're using our hand and foot movements f- to depend on our, our self. And at the same time, when you say karate, it's not only that you are just practicing your yourself doing all this self defense. Practicing martial arts, a karate, is a way uh, one thing is a way of life it's a good exercise for the for the body it's a good exercise for the the body for your mental and physical movements can you tell us about the origins of karate or specifically the form that you emphasize when I was about nine years old I was uh, practicing martial uh, karate with a with a style of black kimono Starting at Okinawan style, Okinawan style of karate. Oh, okay. Which is it's the uh, the karate in the Philippines is not really well known on that because there's no legitimate instructor. What we are, uh, my instructor is been just reading in the book, and then explain it to the to the uh, students. So we start up from there. We start up from the scratch of t- learning martial arts in in, in karate. Our original uh, style of martial arts is the. The, we call this uh, arnes, the mano, or the, uh, the Filipino, uh, the Filipino uh, art, 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 martial art, yeah, yes. martial arts. That's our original uh, uh, stick fighting. In it's like two sticks, two right? Sticks. About maybe yeah. two, one two and stick, a half foot long. Yeah, you know the rotan stick, the cane. Mm-hmm. That's the one that we have been using because that's very, very good, light and very hard to to break. So that's the one that we have been using. Okay, my partner. At that time, he was a uh, he was an arnisador. We call this an arnisador in way way back of uh, Sp- Spanish uh, time. What does that mean? Uh, arnisador is uh, arnis de mano. He is a, just a practitioner, okay. also like that. But okay. They are the original uh, tres terros. That's it means that is three 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 strikes. What do you mean by three strikes? Uh, three kinds of uh, strike uh, when you strike with the stick. So the pattern of attack is always three strikes. That's their uh, style. That's okay. the pattern that they uh, they have been practicing. The one that they have been using before okay, is the bolo, machete. The practice that they have been using is the stick. But the original, when the depends, the country, their place, their tribes is using bolo. Wow, so they would okay. actually this, be using two machetes <coughs> instead yes, of two sticks yes. originally. Actually, the machete mm. and the idaga is the short. So, it's a short uh, knife and mm. the long knife. Same thing that they have been using in the stick. Oh, is one of the sticks longer than the other? They can use that. They they, they improvise that they, because they, uh, they they combine the short and long. You're right for the machete and the dagger. Yes. Oh, interesting. The dagger. Okay. 
So that's the history of uh, Philippine uh, uh, martial arts. Well, that's a little extra bonus. I wasn't expecting to learn about that. What's now? I'm sorry. What is the name of that martial art again? Arnis de Mano. Arnis de Mano. Yes. Very interesting. I've seen that demonstrated here in yes. Saipan, so it's nice to get a little history about where it came from and how it was originally. Yeah, that is, that is uh, the uh, the uh, the startup of uh, tres teros, cinco teros, siete teros, and up to the right now is. Uh, doce, trece tre teros. Which means? The three uh, certain strikes. Ah. So how did you get into Shin Kyoku Shinkai? And what is it that makes this style of karate different from other styles? Number one, well, what does yeah. it mean? What does it st- What is the translation of that? Uh, Kyoku Shinkai. Uh, let's talk about Kyoku Shinkai instead of uh, Shin Kyoku Shinkai because this is a uh, different branch of the Kyoku Shinkai karate. I'm lost. The man, Break it down. The, yeah, for yeah, yeah. Me. <laughs> yeah the, the main uh, Kyoku Shinkai, that's the form of Master Masutatsu Uyama. He's then the founder. This Shin Kyoku Shin is one of the member of uh, Masters in his some of his students. Okay. The master of this art, the Kyokushin, has been uh, practicing all different kinds of martial arts like Shotokan, Gujuru, uh, Okinawa, Okinawa Te, Kung Fu, in all different aspects of martial arts. He was there in practicing and taking up his black belt into a different style. Then after doing all of his style, uh, all of this uh, martial arts, he creates his own. In the history of Masutachu Yama, he lives 15 years up in the mountain. Like a monk. Like a monk. He practices himself, running barefooted, practicing his fist, using the makiwara board as a, the tree. He's practicing that and then he get all the way to fight animals like the mud balls. Oh, the what? Mud bulls. The bull. Oh, the bulls. Okay. So he was uh, he was uh, showing it in the in a big square garden of, uh, uh, in states that's showing the show of defeating the animals with his bare hand. So he showed it into the public to create this Kyokushin Kai Karate. So Kyokushin Kai Karate is a various, a lot of styles of martial arts that have been mixed and make it one style of karate. And when did the master live? Uh, wh- Japan. Oh, oh, how long ago was that? Uh, 19, he was born 1923. Okay. Masutachu, yeah, I believe. If I'm not mistaken, he's part of October. So I believe that he was born, but 1923. What does um, Kyokushin mean? Kyokushin is to find out and to seek. That's the meaning of the, uh, this. Uh, continuous learning of techniques and moves into this art. A non-stop working out of the, uh, of the uh, style. Non-stop uh, working out with yourself as a practitioner, the strength, the power, your stamina, and everything. Well, when we come back for the second half of the show, I want to ask you a little bit more about that because I had heard that this style of karate, some have called it the most rigorous or the most demanding. And I want you to share with us whether that's true, at least the way you teach it. We'll be back with more after this okay. break. Thank you. In Northern Marianas Humanities Council, Bula Guinahanya Puri Historian Marianas Zan Kutura, Sinyon Soda SCCN and Fudmashon Gi's on Mommy website, nmhcouncil.org, Pat Besita Gi YouTube, Pat Facebook. Guajalokwe Diferentes Class in Leblu Naisinia Unfan. In Northern Marianas Humanities Council, 
Welcome back to Your Humanities Half Hour. We are chatting with Sensei Danny Banez. He's a seventh degree uh, black belt in karate. And uh, Danny, uh, when I was preparing for the show, I read some stuff that they said that the Kyokushin karate is the most rigorous, most demanding. Of, is that true? And, and convince us, what is training like? What are the expectations of somebody who is a student of this martial art? Actually, uh, if we're going back about the training that uh, the uh, the Kyukshin way of teaching is really a hardcore of uh, training in practice of the art. It's very demanding. That as uh, as you can uh, say that. They're making it perfectly of your strikes. Especially every techniques, every moves that you are going to practice. According to our uh, master, Masutachu Yama, repeat that moves a 10,000 times of repetition each move that you've been practice. That way you will understand and you can see the accuracy of the moves. Mm. So 10,000 times of repetition. And that is the one that we are going are doing it here, doing as me as an instructor. I, I was following the, uh, that, uh, that concept of uh, teaching. Plus, as uh, here in the island, and the, uh, everybody over here is not as that, uh, can stay with that very uh, rigorous uh, moves and train. Yeah, because I was just thinking... I'm yeah. sorry, go ahead. What, you have, what I have been to do is minimizing a little bit getting lazy about the movements. I just do it, do the repetition over and over until the uh, student will understand and get to know the movements. That's what I've been doing. But to be one of the practitioner, especially in the, uh, in the uh, humble or in the place that we have been practiced, we have to do what they say and what they do. I was just going to say, it sounds like, it, like you really have to, if you're a student of this form of martial art, and maybe most in general, you really have to be... Willing to repeat, 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 repeat. Yes, because uh, for me, you cannot just stick the student, hey, this is what I want, this is what I want. It's not going to be uh, an overnight practice. Hmm. It's not going to be uh, a month of practice. You have to masterize the movement. You have to uh, be uh, get used to that moves. So that that way... In practicing of this art, you don't need to think about what you're going to do in time what you need to defend yourself. It's automatically coming out. It's because of your training and practice. Mm -hmm. Okay. As me as a master, as me as an instructor, as a sensei, I will always correct the student in their moves, in their steps, in their strikes, Whatever moves in regards of, my, uh, of karate in my style, that's I always be correcting. So the reason why I do, I do that because you cannot just do that at once. Patient is a virtue of all the students that needs to learn this, and even the parents who are interested to do this. I have to explain it to them about details by details, everything that they need to understand, how, why I'll do this over and over. Mm -hmm. Okay? I want them to put it in their mind, in their heart, in their body, in their soul. What kind of transformations have you witnessed um, in your students, or maybe there's some particular students that come to mind? Uh, they come in raw, you know, and then they work with you for weeks, months, maybe even years. 
what what is their growth well I have a very good example of one of my students that I'm going to uh, is going to go with me in this competition in Guam by uh, April 29th number one is the Guam full contact karate yeah, full championship contact cha- yes. championship he was go with me and we started up quite of uh, September way back in September when we start up with the uh, uh, late September going to October and until now we've been really working out because I told him that uh, I want to see myself into him to uh, to work out and helping me also with the uh, with uh, because I'm planning or I'm deciding myself to to compete also representing this island into this competition so me and him and then now and then some other kids these other kids that I have uh, my my students uh, I know that they are still young and they don't understand about this competition and that is one more thing that I want to uh, be built in here in this island to have a competition here so that every youth can see the uh, martial arts that they can go all the way with that level of competing with others at least we show ourselves potential is seen here in this island what is a traditional training either week or day like traditionally in this this uh, yeah, martial arts? Uh, uh, traditionally, at least you have a three times uh, in a week practice. At this minimum, because we are all having a responsibility, like we have the job. I divide myself. I divide my uh, my time doing this. Like after my work, having refreshing, and then go back to the gym. Uh, as, uh, as of now, it's because of this preparation that I've been doing. I've been doing this for everyday practice with the students and me at, at the same time. My schedule of practice, like in, in, the, in Monday, all basic uh, movements, all basic strikes, all the, uh, the training that we have been doing in Monday's uh, class. And then choose, uh, Wednesday is mostly uh, I prepare for all the self-defense what they've been practicing in some of the movements of katas, that the kata movement that I've been uh, teaching. The forms. Yeah, forms. Then Friday, we do the uh, techniques and sparring. We do spar each other in, the, in Fridays. Then some of the uh, days that I've been there is uh, personal training, okay, that uh, I've been using for my... Uh, for the preparation of the competition. So, uh, this, uh, this month is a Women's Day. So I have the program starting on Tuesdays. Uh, every Tuesday uh, every Tuesday at 5 o'clock with all the women's sub depends that I've been teach. What are some important things to know about self-defense if you're a woman? For a woman? Mm-hmm. Getting away from it. Okay. If it's not necessary, don't just stick with the uh, with, with 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 this uh, right situation. Back, this situation, you always get aware of that. Okay, but just in case they approach you and attack you with this, at least you know how to move yourself. How to move yourself, getting away. Okay, but just in case, when you learn about defending yourself, then you have to apply. What are some of the principles to keep in mind when you think about how to move yourself to get away? Well, be focused. Be focused. Don't just scare. Don't scare. Because they're coming at you. They're going to attack you. The attack is left and right. Okay? The movements of the attack is across. Center. Yeah. Always take the center. Every movement is coming from the side to side, from top to bottom. So, with that, with that, 
To defend yourself, is you stay focused. Don't cover up your face because sometimes they're scared. When they're scared, they cover up their face, especially the kids. Okay, how could you defend yourself if you are not going to look at the, uh, the attacker? So for me, focus yourself. And this attacker, we're going to think something where he is going to deliver his move because you're ready. He cannot just go to you and attack you. Once somebody else has been approaching and attacking or harassing like that, stay focused. Don't turn your back. Because if you turn your back, he's going to scratch your back. Stay focused and then? Then, ready for what you know, how you defend yourself. Then, when, as a woman, when you attack, you know the uh, vitals. Always think about the vitals, where, you, where is the weakness of the attacker that you can apply. So, that way, you can avoid. Okay? When they approach and you hit the target, you hit the vitals, then they can, you can stop them or surrender themselves or getting away from you. Because they know that you're in the focus, you're ready, you can defend yourself. That's the main in there. Okay? Because movements, it takes practice. It takes practice, it takes someone to teach you. But this basic that I'm going to t uh, that, uh, teach in this woman ma uh, self defense month is the uh, natural uh, reaction in. That's that's good question that you uh, give me. That uh, I'm going to explain it to them, explain it to the woman. They don't need to stay and fight. If they can get avoid and get away, get away. That's more better. It means you don't hurt him. You don't hurt the attacker, and she doesn't hurt you. Avoid. So separate with that, with that uh, commotion. Thank you for that. When you have um, new students uh, come to you, what are the common, shall we say, bad habits or mentality, thoughts, beliefs that you find that need to be broken down in order for them to grow? Okay. Number one thing with the uh, new students, especially students that having ha learned some kind of style already, sometimes they are emphasizing what they have learned. Okay, that is their style. I respect whatever style that they have, which is when they come to me and accept my, uh, my style for them to learn, we start up, I'm going to start up from them that this is my style. I'm talking to them that I respect your style that you've been taught, that you've been learned. But this is my style that the way I taught, the way I teach you as my student right now. So respecting each other, that's the number one thing that you always learn from this art, from, from martial arts. Okay? You should respect what they, what they have. It's the same thing when you bow each other, you're respecting each other. So we start up for the style, for what I've been going to teach. Okay, I'm not asking them to forget what they have. I'm adding up what I've been teach. So there is no getting complete in that. As a practitioner or a, a young student, nothing, zero, they start up with a proper basic movements of the art. Starting with closing their fist, stepping their foot, their balancing, those things. Oh, There's yeah. Because uh, karate is more like a sliding of the foot, if I'm yes, not mistaken. Yes. When you step, you, s like you slide move, the foot on yes. the ground. Mm. How you step. Mm. Uh, practicing that so that your way, uh, your balancing and movement. You're stable. You're stable. Mm. Then, 
when you are in the uh, preparation of movements, you always bending your knee. Not from the top going down and go. Same thing when you walk. You always slightly bend your knee to walk. It's not going to be straight. <laughs> you should always find the basic usual doing of the human body movements. What the body should be doing naturally. Yeah, natural. Mm, natural mm. movement. Mm. Don't, I don't change any unnatural. Natural movements of the body. I just using the flow of the movements using the techniques of, movement, of my style. That's how I do the, uh, my, I, uh, should I do to my students. You're 67 years old, still teaching, still active. How do you stay sharp yourself? Well, as a practitioner, uh, practitioner of martial arts, as an athlete, because I believe that I'm the one of the athlete ever since that I was been young, uh, from the students all the way as me as now as I'm being an instructor with this. Uh, it's the, uh, what I've been doing is, yeah, don't forget about working out, practicing yourself. Okay, balancing your food also. Before, yes, I know I'm, I'm a hard eater. I can eat a big plate of uh, rice and f whatever food. Yeah. But now, as I can see, in my age right now, if I'm going to the party, I just pick whatever I like to taste. In the, in the uh, just to minimize your diet. You have to control your diet. You have to control yourself. Manage yourself, especially in food. Plus your exercise. I'm a cyclist. I go compete with the, with the cycling. So I'm not uh, in the basketball anymore because my knee. Mm. Oh. Like, uh, they advise me not to jump. Jump, yeah. Understandable. <laughs> well, Sensei Danny, I want to thank you for sharing with us today. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add that maybe I didn't ask about before mm -hmm. we go? Okay, what I want to add with this uh, conversation that we have is I want to encourage and invite the uh, people of Saipan, especially those, those uh, having uh, know, know about martial arts, that get into this meeting that the, uh, the mayor has been going to do with us to meet each other, to talk about how we can share this art into the community. That one, my, that I, for me, that is the good start. Understanding each other and teaching each other to promote more about martial arts in this island. And the bottom line of this, I want to have a competition, which is, I was been talented with that also, uh, forming a competition because I've been officiating a uh, tournaments. I can share that with everyone. We can practice all of these uh, head instructors to how to do this so that we understand about the rulings that we are going to compete each other. That way, we can spread out and as now that I have the invitation, okay, maybe in the next year, I'm not the only one who's going to represent. I, not only my team, like Jerry Diaz, one of my uh, students, one of him is going with me to compete with this competition and taking up seminars, taking more techniques of this art that we're going to adapt. So that one, I can guarantee that when we come back with this competition, we're going to take back this uh, fruitful things that we've been learned from this competition. And of course the result, what we did, we did. Okay, but the most thing, the seminar that we're going to take is to bring it back here in Saipan to spread it out more. So that the next time, maybe all the youths and the uh, adult practitioner of this martial art, of karate, will be spreading out. 
not only me as a Kyokushin Kai Karate, I share my talent to everyone. That's my goal. Well, if anybody shares your vision of getting the martial artists together, uh, how can they get in touch with you or if they would like more information? Well, uh, they can... As the start of this, uh, I, I give it uh, to our mayor, R.B. Camacho, uh, the, uh, the invitation. I get some uh, names or, already that they've been get, getting be called and getting into this meeting. If uh, they want to uh, call me personally, my, uh, my number is 989-5524. Um, six seven zero nine eight nine five five two four. That's correct. Okay, and uh, they can uh, see me at the uh, uh, it's a Jotin building uh, over at the Chalan Kanoa, the Sydney okay. Martial Arts Academy. Thank you again for sharing, and we wish you and your team the best of luck at the 2023 Guam Full Contact Karate Championship, April 29th. Thank, Thank you, you, Sensei. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Our guest today has been Sensei Danny Banez uh, speaking to us as a 7th degree black belt in karate. Uh, speaking a lot today about Shinkyoku, Shinkai Karate, but also other interesting forms. This has been Your Humanities Half Hour. I'm Catherine Perry. Your Humanities Half Hour is a production of the Northern Marianas Humanities Council, funded in part by the National Endowment for the Humanities. Any views, findings, or recommendations expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily represent those of the National Endowment for the Humanities or the Northern Marianas Humanities Council.